If I need to have cannon, I must remove some layers. Otherwise, how I will open the free space? Sorry if my roof will be connected with my floor, <laughs> my, my room will be closed. And I can't wait for your lectures. If I need to do it, I will disconnect it and remove some layers from the walls. That I remember, please, the weak places of human body, natural weak places. This is the weak places without some layers, but we have that artificial weak place. Touch wood, then we will take the scalpel and we'll cut any parts of the human body. What will be happening in the future scar? What is the scar connected tissue? You will cut seven layers. Instead of seven layers, one scar will be formed. It will be weaker than natural seven layers. That's it. This will be artificial weak place. That's it. We have natural weak places and we have artificial weak places. Artificial weak places divided into post-traumatical and post-surgical. So after the trauma it can be happened. After the surgery it can be happened. Doesn't matter. Let's say remember forever, fat is great developed except the umbilical rib. Fat, best developed place, it is lower portion of the ante anterior abdominal wall, hypogastral region. In hypogastral region, fat is huge developed. More of this, by superficial fascia, it is divided into the layers. A little after I will speak about this list. Now remember, it is divided. Why? Because superficial fascia in the lower portion of abdomen divided into two layers. And inside of the fat, divided the fat into several layers. Look, not into two layers, into several layers. About which we will mention a little bit after. More of this, inside of the fatty tissue web, superficial vessels and nerves. Remember forever, I told you many times, once again I want to say you, all vessels and nerves which is in fatty tissue we call superficial. All vessels and nerves which is located deep to fat under the proper fascia we call deep vessels and nerves. That's an anterior abdominal wall we will study superficial vessels and nerves and deep vessels and nerves. Let's continue. Next layer it is superficial fascia. Look here please. In epigastral and mesogastral region, it is presented by one layer. It is located in the fat and it is divided fat into superficial and deep compartments. Nothing more. In the lower term, in hypogastral region, this one layer of superficial fascia divided into two layers. Is it understandable for you? I don't know, is it good develop here? Show here, it's not so good to show here. But anyhow, look here, please. This blue layer, which you see, this superficial fascia, but it, here it's not shown. Now look here, please. Superficial layer of superficial fascia, we call counter fascia. Deep layer of superficial fascia, we call scar fascia, otherwise Thompson fascia. This once again. From upper and middle portions, it is just one layer, but like my white color. In lower third, this one layer divided into two campers and scalpers. How many fatty layers will we have? Three. Three. One in front of camper, second between camper and Thompson, and last under the Thompson or scar. Thompson and scar, both names you can use, it doesn't matter. More of these guys, between the passage of these two layers, there are different. Look, campers fascia, like my white color from anterior abdominal wall continues to my lower extremity. And in the lower extremity, it is covered lower extremity as the superficial fascia. But not the same for the uh, uh, Thompson one. Thompson fascia, look, descended up to the inguinal ligament, fused with the inguinal ligament, and goes to the perineal organ and genital organs, and cover it like superficial fascia of perineum and gen genital organs which we call all as fish, all as fish. That's I remember, guys, that's very simple. Camper's fascia continues to down to the lower extremity. Scarp fascia goes to the region of the perineum, perineum and genital organs. Now, a simple question. Dear friend, can I ask you? Look, see, imagine the problem, pus, which is located between skin and camper fascia. Tell me, please, the possible place of its spreading. 
from up to down by the gravity forces. Thank you very much. Of course, lower extreme. Lower yeah? extreme yes. It will be descending to down up to the lower extreme. Imagine second situation. Problem is located between Camper and between Thompson fish. Place of its spreading. Again, lower extreme. No any problem because we don't have any border. Now imagine the last situation. Problem is located behind of the uh, scarp fish. Genital organs and the perineal Say, so you look to the pathological problem and you make the differential diagnosis. You understand how deep is located the problem. In one case, you see phlegmon, which is goes to exactly directly down. In another case, you can see phlegmon, which is goes to the perineal organ. You understand that they are located in different layers. Idea is understandable for you. Great, let's continue. Next layer it is proper fission. Remember forever, proper fission in the anterior abdominal wall, it is not developed. By microscope, you can see very thin layer. By your eye check, you will not find anything. Why? Because here, guys, the muscles forms the aponevrosis and the muscles covered by aponevrosis, not by proper fissures so much. You can ask me why evolutionally it is happened. Guys, evolutionally, we try to remove unnecessary layers from this region to make the high elasticity for, for anterior abdominal wall. Because if will be a lot of layers here, elasticity of the wall will be decreased. And it will be impossible because it is evolutionally necessary for us for breathing, for pregnancy, for anything. Let's say, remember, please don't describe proper fish. Again, I say, it doesn't mean that it's absent. No, it's present, but it's present very bad. And exactly after superficial fissure, we start to discover, by the way, your superficial fissure is also absent in your umbilical ring because it fused with another layer. Let's say, now you find two layers which is absent in your umbilical ring. Next layer, layer number three, which I will describe now, that is the muscles. And you know, again, muscles will be absent in your umbilical ring. Instead of the muscles, you will see here aponevrosis, which we call white line of the abdomen. Little after, we will speak about it. How muscles presented, change the slide, please. How muscles presented in anterior abdominal wall by two groups? Lateral portion of your belly occupies so-called oblique muscles, which is three, like my three fingers, which I put here. From superficial, it would be external oblique, internal oblique, and transverse abdominal muscles. Three oblique muscles. By the way, it doesn't originate in anterior abdominal wall. Little after, I will say about it. In the middle side, you have so-called straight muscles, which is two, musculus rectus, the biggest one, and the pyramidal muscle, which can be present or absent approximately 25-30% of the persons doesn't have this muscle. Anyhow, let's say remember please, what you should know about each muscle, origin, insertion, direction of muscular fibers, place of its changing to the aponeurosis. Now look please everybody in this picture. For example, first muscle, ex in external oblique abdominal muscle. How many colors show this muscle? Two. You have red color, which is shown for your muscular fibers. And you have white color, which is show the place of its transition into the upper and growth. Like, this is also important. As example, for external oblique muscle, portion number one, point number one, origin. It is originated from anterior surface of eight inferior ribs, from five up to the top. Eight inferior ribs. It is descended to down, and it is inserted to anterior two-thirds of anterior superior iliac spine, and then, like a panevrose, it is come to the pubic tuberculum and pubic cities and fused with them. It is place of insertion. 
muscular fibers pass from up to down, from laterally to medially. If you will put your hands in your pocket, fingers will show for you the direction of the fibers of this muscle. Up to down, laterally to medium. Now listen me attentively. We come to a very important point. Place of its transition into the upper nebros. There are two places there the muscle transited into upper nebros. First one, it is the lateral margin of the rectus muscle. Otherwise, it is continuation of your middle quadrature line. Remember forever, medially to these lines, no any muscle, only upper nebros. Boom. Second place of transition of muscle into upper nebros, it is by spinal line. Again, I show you. In this side, it is cutting to show for your rectus muscle. Normally, it should be absolutely completely white. Second line is that one. You can see that below this line, no any red color for external oblique. Only white. Ideas understandable. Let's I remember, please, two transitional places. One I will show now by my pen. Second, I will show by my mark. Medially to my pen, no external oblique, only it's upon a cross. Below my marker, no external oblique, only upon a cross. What is happening with this upon a cross inferior? We look at please. As I say you, from upwards, this upon a cross fused with anterior superior iliac spine. From downwards, it is fused with the pubic bones. How it fused, I will show a little after for you. And also, it makes the fold and forms the duplication. Now look everybody, so it is turned to back and make the application. Friend, how I call the piece of my white color between my hands? Ligament. Which one? Ligament. Which one? Inguinal ligament. You are very clever, smart person. Let's say, remember please, part of aponebrose of external oblique, which is between these two bones, from up, anterior superior iliac spine, from down, it is the pubic bone. This is your inguinal ligament. Now you understand, friends, what does it mean, inguinal ligament, and how it forms. Inguinal ligament, it is lowest free margin of aponebrose of external oblique. But how it is different from simple aponebrose? Duplication. Simple aponebrose, it is just one, one layer. Inguinal ligament, it is double layers. Nothing different from another, only that one. This is, guys, your natural border between your abdomen and between mm -hmm. your lower extremity. For big persons, for big persons, we say <coughs> inguinal fold is natural border. Why? Because inguinal ligament is not palpable. But this is not correct. You know why? Because inguinal fold by gravity forces it can be descended to down. Let's say try to not use such kind of the terminology like inguinal fold. Say that inguinal ligament is formed. Even if it is invisible, try to palpate it. Because again, I say you saw a fold, I see the persons with the fold on the level of the knee. It doesn't mean that this is the border of abdomen and lower extreme, no. For normal persons, normal constitutional, fault and ligament would hit the same level. But for big persons, because of gravity forces, fault is descending to the ligament. No, ligament no. cannot be descending. It is fused with the bones. But skin fault with fat descending to the that I remember, please, and understand it, please. Let's continue. Now, look in this portion of a panemros. What does it mean? It is covered the rectus muscle, and it is involved in formation of rectus sheet. Little after, we will draw it together. That's why I remember, please, laterally, uh, sorry, medially to the lateral margin of rectus muscle, nor any internal oblique muscle. We have internal oblique upon across, which is covered the rectus and involved in formation of the rectus sheet. Now, looking the opposite side, uh, uh, dear friend, can you open the next picture? 
for example, this one. Thank you very much. You can see that the window is forming the external oblique, and under external oblique, you can see second file muscle, which we call internal oblique muscle. How it is originating? What we say? It is come from back, from lumbar region, and this originated from the proper fascia of lumbar region, which we call fascia thoracolumbaris. Why thoracolumbaris? Because it's covered the back of the thorax of lumbar region. So it is originated from proper fascia, place of insertion. Look at this. It is inserted upwards to the inferior margin of two ribs. It is 11 and 30. And also 10 more. Reach up to the level of the 10. But above the 10, one, it was absent. Inferiorly, very important, listen to me attentively. It is fused to anterior superior iliac spine. Listen to me attentively. And to the approximately health of your inguinal ligament. Approximately a little bit less than health. A superior one third. Let's have a look. It is fused with superior one third of your inguinal ligament. And finally, upper nevrose of this muscle cover again the rectus muscle. Place of passage of this muscle to upper nevrose. Now only one. Look in the picture. This is internal oblique muscle. It is external oblique. It is internal. Look. Previous. Previous slide, open please. Previous. Uh -huh. In the previous slide, uh, this is shown only in the uh, side picture, but then anyhow, you can see this slide. Do you remember for previous muscle there are two lines, and horizontal and vertical? Here only vertical line, no any horizontal. And this is again lateral margin of the rectus muscle. Again, lateral margin of the rectus muscle. The direction of the fibers. Look, I put my hands in mid part of my belly and I open my fingers. Like fan made direction. In upwards from down to up, from laterally to medially. Middle side, absolutely transverse. And lower side, absolutely same to external oblique. From up to down, from laterally to the medially. So remember this open hand in your belly. Fingers will show for you direction of the fibers of this muscle. Again, remember forever, medially it is become proper nevrose and involve information of the right sheet. Let's continue. Now look in this picture. This muscle internal oblique is removed and you see transverse abdominal muscle. It is the last oblique muscle. Again, originated from thoracolumbar fascia. Muscular fibers is absolutely transverse. From upwards, it is inserted to inner surface of six inferior ribs, from seven up to 12. Looks so interesting. External oblique inserted to external surface of eight inferior. Internal to inferior margin and transverse to internal surface. We have something like this. This is costal arch. This is three muscles. External attached to external surface. Internal to inferior margin. And transverse to the inner surface. You understand it? Inferiorly, absolutely same to internal oblique. Anterior superior iliac spine and upper third of inguinal ligament. Again, medially it is become quapanebrose, only one vertical line coincide with the lateral margin of the rectus and again involve information of the rectus. All three muscles, if you was attentive, you will understand that all three muscles near the lateral margin of the rectus become aponebrosis. And this aponebrosis involving information of the rectus. But now guys, we come to the most important question of my today's lecture. As you see, these two last muscles, which I mentioned now, internal oblique and transverse, they doesn't fuse to all your inguinal ligament. Now, my right hand, it is inguinal ligament. My left hand, it is these two muscles. They fused only to the upper third of it. 
Do you see this distance between my right and left hand? We call it inguinal space. Inside of this inguinal space, inguinal canal will be formed. And this inguinal space, as you understand, it is weak space of human body. Why? These huge two muscles absent here. Because they doesn't fuse with inguinal ligament. Do you understand me? Yes. If you will take the needle and will perforate it, this part of anterior abdominal wall, internal oblique and transverse muscles will not be perforated because they will be outwards. Inguinal space, it is the weakest place of anterior abdominal wall and the most usual place of growing formations. Hernias formations. Yes. And it is congenital weak place, of course. It is not acquired with this place. Acquired, it is post-traumatic or post-surgical. Idea is understandable for you guys. Now look to me. For the males, it has triangular shape form. Distance between uh, inguinal ligament and free margin, it is up to two to one half centimeters. It is big. For the females, it is the groove shape space. Distance is small, half of a centimeter. Can you tell me why? Why? Because it contains all the out here. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because, look okay, here, please. This is my inguinal ligaments, yeah? I'm male. My inguinal ligaments has vertical descending position. Your females, your inguinal ligaments has more horizontal because your pelvis is wider. The more wide this pelvis, the more horizontal will be inguinal ligament. It means distance between floor and between roof will be decreased. That's why inguinal ligaments in more than 80%, it is male problems, not the female. Remember forever, yes. Why so don't be so happy? Because after we will study femoral hernia, something 100% it will be females. That's why remember, please, if inguinal hernias, this is the male problems, mainly, I don't say only, femoral vice versa. Idea is understandable for you. I can simply draw this for you. Now look here, please. Point number one, anterior superior in x part. Point number two, tuberculum cubicle. Point number three, pubic synthesis. Thank you very much. Now look here, please. From point number one to point number two, I provided the blue line. Blue line in my picture number four, it is in the middle. I don't finish it. Why? Because near the pubic synthesis, it is split into two legs. In my picture, it is A and B. A1, we call the superior or medial leg. It is fused with 0.3 cubic synthesis. B1, it is the lateral or inferior. It is fused with tuberculum cubicle. Between these structures, you can see the aperture is formed, which firstly has triangular shape form, but from upwards, there are special aponevrotical fibers which is fused with these legs. In my picture, it is structure C. We call intercrural fibers. And from downwards, we have the special ligament which is fused with the pubic bones. Do you remember I told you that deep layer of superficial fascia which is goes to perineum, we call pollen fascia. And this one, structure number D, we call pollen ligament. And finally, triangular shape space become to oval shape space, and it is E structure, which we call superficial ring of inguinal canal. This is superficial. We don't have canal, but we form together inguinal superficial ring. What the meaning of it? For the males, simply, guys, look to me. For the males, it is communicated inguinal canal with the scrotum. And because of this aperture, through this aperture, spermatic cord from inguinal canal, descend into the scrotum and connect it with the testes. For the female, round ligament of uterus pass from this aperture, come to the pubic bones and fuse with them, nothing more. 
Let's say remember, please, this is superficial ring, how it forms. Inguinal ligament split it into two legs, between legs from upwards interpleural fibers, from downwards reflexive policy ligament. ligament. For structures for long, long, let's continue, we don't finish. Now look, I divided this inguinal ligament into three portions. And now from the portion number one, I draw the fibers. I draw the fibers. I draw the fibers. Which fibers is it? This is structure number five in our picture. Five or six? Five, yeah? Only in the brackets right here, it is the fibers of internal oblique and transverse abdominal muscles. Both of them fused only to the upper third, but don't fuse to the lower two thirds. Don't fuse to the lower two thirds. That's why you can simply recognize this space F in our picture, which we call inguinal space. This is inguinal space, friends. And inside of this inguinal space, we will have inguinal canal. What is the roof of this space? Free margin of internal and transverse oblique muscles. What is the floor of this space? What is the exit of this space? Superficial ring of the inguinal ligament, which I draw for you. But you don't know what is posterior wall of this uh, canal. What is anterior wall, you also know. It is a paragrosa of external oblique because inguinal ligament to upwards continues like the paragrosa. Mm. That's why now you know three walls of the canal from anteriorly external oblique paragrosa, from inferiorly inguinal ligament, from upwards free margin of the muscles. What is the posterior wall of this canal? Under the muscles, we have deep layer of the proper fissure, which we call transverse fissure. Why it is transverse? Because, look, he is external oblique, she is internal oblique, he is transverse abdominal muscles, three oblique muscles, deepest one is transverse. Internal surface of transverse muscle covered by this fissure. That's a fissure is called transverse, because it is covered internal surface of transverse muscle. 